So a little bit about me is I'm 23 now. Uh, I stopped taking caffeine when I was 22, and I've been drinking it for since I was about 14, I would say so. Yeah, 14 around there, 14, 15. So around seven or eight years, and during like the height of my usage, you know, I would drink upwards of 500 milligrams a day. Um, it was no problem for me to just drink like two or three coffees and an energy drink, um, especially before the gym. I'd like to drink a lot of caffeine. That's changed now a lot. I don't drink caffeine at all anymore. Um, I've been caffeine free now for uh, 14 months, but I'll just call it a year to make things easier to digest and understand. A year. I've been caffeine free a year. And uh, I just kind of wanted to give my opinions on caffeine now that I've quit and kind of just talk about, you know, what it was like quitting caffeine and sort of what I went through in the beginning and, you know, how kind of caffeine's changed uh, my life, so to speak, because it's a huge drug that people consume and nobody really looks at it like a drug. I'm not trying to be dramatic here, but it is a drug. Honestly, it alters your state of consciousness. And, you know, we're never really told that. We're just kind of like, okay, caffeine, coffee, it's normal. Everybody does it. Uh, but there are definitely drawbacks right. to that. Uh, the reason I quit caffeine originally is actually because uh, I was experiencing a lot more anxiety and stress around that time period. And I started doing some reading and started analyzing, you know, some choices I was making in my life. And I realized that caffeine is literally liquid stress. We're ingesting liquid stress in the form of caffeine because of the reactions it has with uh, norepinephrine, epinephrine, and cortisol. You're literally drinking liquid stress. So I started from that. I was able to, you know, put two and two together and was like, okay, well, if I'm drinking liquid stress and I'm experiencing more stress than lately right now, um, maybe I should cut out the caffeine. And right around that time, I had started a new job, actually. So uh, the timing couldn't have been worse, to be honest, but I'm glad I stuck with it because I wouldn't be where I'm at now if I didn't. Uh, I was starting a new job. I remember it was around um, October. No, 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 no. Yeah, I was starting the new job October the 7th or October the 8th around there. And I'd quit caffeine September 14th. So I was almost a month into it. So I was really feeling like the negative side effects. I feel like you don't get the the worst side effects till maybe two weeks in, uh, you know, a month in around there. You really start to get those bad side effects, but then they go away pretty quickly. Uh, those side effects would just be lethargic, low energy, kind of just feeling like crap, to be honest. You got to expect that going into it, especially if you've been addicted for as long as I was and you were drinking more. Uh, coffee or caffeine than I was if not for longer periods of time you got to expect that there's going to be a little withdrawal period where you don't feel so good um, But yeah, low energy lethargic. You just really feel like sleeping more I remember during that time period. I was sleeping like an extra two hours for about a month I was sleeping close to ten hours and then I kind of leveled off and got back uh, To it, but the reason I quit originally was because of stress and anxiety And I wanted to decrease my levels of stress and anxiety and that it did it definitely helped in that it was also a revelation to me though that it's not just caffeine, it's gonna help you manage your stress and anxiety. It definitely adds to it, but there's other things going on outside, external factors that I had to stop and look at and kind of pause to help uh, get myself back on track and start feeling better. Okay, so now that I've talked about why I quit caffeine, I wanna give you guys some insight onto, as to the benefits of quitting caffeine and what it's done for me. Uh, the number one benefit I've seen with reducing caffeine intake to zero, not even, I used to, because before I quit, I used to be a, proponent of okay just drink it in the morning you know like early in the morning like you know 8 to let's say lunch like 8 a.m to lunch i wouldn't drink caffeine past lunchtime and i would only drink one cup of coffee this was towards the end of my caffeine usage because i had already started to realize it catch on you know just how detrimental it could be um but even before then you know i noticed this effect my sleep quality was not that good i wouldn't be able to sleep throughout the night uh, it would take me forever to fall asleep. I remember I always had that issue of like falling asleep. Like my brain didn't want to shut down into, okay, it's time to go to sleep mode, Luis. My brain didn't want to do that. Being off caffeine now for a year, like once I hit the sheets, like I'm ready to go. Within 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I'm falling asleep. Unless there's some worry or stress on my mind that's out of the norm, uh, usually I'm asleep within 10 to 15 minutes. I fall asleep quicker. I sleep deeper. I wake up in the morning with more energy and I wake up more ready to go, you know, instead of just dragging myself to get that first cup of coffee. I wake up now like, boom, like, let's go. You know, within like 30 minutes, I'm fully awake. Uh, I drink a glass of water and that's it. That's literally all I need. It's great. I don't feel reliant on any stimulant or anything. I'm ready to go. Another benefit I've seen being off of caffeine is I have better workouts now. I'm more focused during my workouts. That was a big scare for me as somebody who likes to train and, you know, lift weights and just be more athletic. That was a big scare for me in the beginning, like why I was hesitant for, for years, honestly, was, Am I gonna be able to perform the same without caffeine in the gym? Am I gonna be able to perform the same uh, you know, at work 
without caffeine. That was a big thing for me, performance, because I had gotten so accustomed to them. And I know that it helped me. I know it was a crutch, especially when I didn't get the best nice rest um, or when I had other things going on and I needed to pick me up. I could always rely on caffeine to help with that. But actually what I found is uh, my performance increased, so I'm less scatterbrained. I feel like with caffeine, I was more all over the place. Definitely had more energy, but it was kind of like more scattered. Uh, my, my focus has definitely increased in one direction. So just whatever I'm focusing on, I can you know focus. I'd say 20, 25% better now being off of caffeine, which is definitely an improvement. And my workout quality has also increased. And one thing that you know being off caffeine led me to do ultimately, I can make a whole separate video on this, is it led me to doing less in the gym but getting more results. As crazy as that sounds, on caffeine, I was actually going harder, so to speak, killing myself, training longer, doing more volume, doing more sets, doing more reps, and actually getting less muscle than what I do now. And I think a big reason why I do less now is because one, the lockdown happened, so I had to start working on it at home, even though I had a, a decent weight set at home. But two is I stopped drinking caffeine. So without that caffeine in my system artificially amping me up, artificially carrying me through a long workout, I now realized, hold on, I don't have as much energy as I thought I did before. I need to scale back on what I do. So now what I do in the gym is I'd say 30% less volume overall, but the quality of time I'm in the gym is much better. I don't be on my phone. I'm not talking to people. I'm really just more focused. Um, I feel more productive in my workouts. And now that I'm not being artificially amped up by caffeine, my workouts are shorter. I'm not in there as long. It doesn't take, it takes me maybe an hour to get all my training done, if that. Um, I could definitely be done in like 50 minutes if I'm being quicker and I'm not wasting as much time. Um, and also I'm able to recover from my workouts now. See, I'm naturally using what my body has available to it in terms of recoverability, in terms of energy to work out. I'm not introducing some false stimulus some different variable into my into my body system and using that to carry me through the workout. Now it's just like, okay, whatever energy Luis's body has, he has for the workout. And that same energy that I was able to output, I will be able to recover from now because it wasn't some false stimulant being put into my body allowing me to do more than I actually could recover from. Uh, hopefully that makes sense, but I definitely noticed a benefit there. Another benefit is I actually have reduced anxiety now. I'd say I reduced my anxiety by like 15 to 20%, which is definitely significant in my life. Uh, and I think anybody would appreciate a 15 or 20% reduction in anxiety. That's what I noticed, at least in myself. It definitely helps take that edge off. Um, I'm a lot more comfortable in you know different social situations, job interviews, things like that that would normally make a person really nervous. Uh, I still get somewhat nervous now, but I'm able to kind of be with it and not freak out about being nervous. It's kind of like, oh, I'm getting nervous, okay. You know, I'm able to be with it more biggest results uh, I've seen you know my rest when I actually sleep is deeper and I'm able to fall asleep quicker my workout quality has improved and it's actually less total volume I'm doing now and my anxiety and stress levels have decreased by I'd say at least 15% if not 20% uh, which are three big benefits that I've seen in my life also you know another one that's a little off offhand is the focus I've definitely seen increased focus not only in the gym but in performance if I'm doing work uh, if I'm reading, if I'm doing anything, I've noticed an increase in my ability to focus on one task. Just my general thoughts on caffeine. I feel like it's not talked about enough that caffeine is a drug. It alters your state of consciousness. The person you are before caffeine and the person you are after quitting for a substantial amount of time, I'd say at least six months, uh, a lot of times are two different people. People remember the stuff they used to do when they were on caffeine, all amped up, uh, doing these meaningless tasks for hours on end, working jobs they really don't like because they're on caffeine versus when they're off caffeine, they make career changes. That's actually happened to me. Um, they do and operate in life differently because they're off of caffeine. They're not being artificially stimulated by something now. A lot of times relationships will fizzle out. Um, all sorts of changes can happen in your life when you're not altering your state of consciousness with a certain drug, especially a stimulant. You don't know what those changes are gonna be till you actually quit the drug. That's why my recommendation to people is like, try for six months. I know that sounds like forever without your caffeine or without your coffee or your monster energy drink, but it's like try it for six months and see how you feel. If you don't like it, you can try, you can give it up uh, at that point. But my motto is always, especially for myself, and I tell people the same thing, it's like quit or try something new first. Don't just go off of other people's experiences. Try it for yourself and then dictate or figure out whether or not you actually like this and this is something you want to continue or you don't want to continue. And at that point, if you don't, then go right back to drinking caffeine. It's always going to be there. But you never know uh, what you're missing out on until you actually try it. And I would say most people don't even need caffeine. Almost say everyone doesn't need caffeine. We did it without it for hundreds of years, thousands of years. 
Um, we don't need it now just because we live in, I guess, a faster paced world or a different world. People like to use that argument, but it's not even true. You don't need caffeine to keep up. I've been able to do just fine. After that initial adjustment and withdrawal period, uh, you feel like your old self again. It's just natural, stable energy. It's not like I drink my caffeine, I'm up here in the morning, and then like once I start coming down off caffeine, you know, I start coming down. It's more like I'm kind of just here the whole day. Towards the nighttime, towards the evening, like five, six o'clock, you start to slow down a bit. Um, but even then, I've noticed that I can work out after work or, you know, in evening hours just fine. I don't really see like too much of a decrease in performance. You just got to make sure you're getting your sleep on point. And quitting caffeine definitely helps in that. I think we need to, you know, not just think of caffeine as no big deal or it's nothing. It's definitely a big deal. It definitely changes the way you interact with the world and go about life. Uh, and I would recommend trying going off of caffeine for a bit. Some people say, oh, I don't want to try it. The reason they say that is because they can't even quit. They're addicted and they don't want to admit it to themselves. They can't even quit the drug. So my first instinct would be to tell somebody quit for six months, even three months. If you can do three months, you know, if you can't go any longer than 90 days, do three months and see how you feel. But I really feel like to get the full benefits, you have to do at least six months, if not a year, depending on how long you were abusing caffeine will dictate on how long it really takes you to recover from that. Um, adrenal fatigue syndrome is a, is a real thing. You can look it up. There's a lot of research. There's a lot of uh, individual cases I read on people who develop adrenal fatigue. Uh, it's a serious thing, and it's not something that should just be swept under the rug like most people do nowadays. Like, they just abuse their caffeine, you know, like pump ourselves up every day during the week, and then we drink ourselves numb. Like, it's a larger problem at play here, but I don't want to go on forever. I could make this video much longer, but... I hope you guys enjoyed. Try it if you haven't. Try quitting caffeine. See how things go for you. Try quitting for six months. Try quitting for a year. And I promise you, if you quit for six months to a year, you're most likely not going to want to go back. Unless you just really like the taste of coffee, which you can get out of the way with decaf, or you see no benefits, which I highly doubt. I just don't see why most people would go back after quitting for a year or quitting for a substantial amount of time. It just doesn't make sense because once you realize you can do everything you did while you were on it, while off of it, you realize I don't need to go back and I don't get any of the negative side effects that come with ingesting caffeine. So that's all I have to say for today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, leave any questions or comments you have. If you've quit caffeine or you've tried before in the past or you did quit successfully and you don't drink it anymore, let me know what your experiences, what that were. I'd love to hear back from you guys. And uh, thank you for watching the video.